Hey, it's JC and welcome to Small Brick City, where we want to help you build a Lego city regardless of the space you have. Well, welcome, welcome. This is Coffee and Bricks episode 15. We are live. I apologize for being five minutes late. I just got in from a wedding party. That's right. It's 12.05 a.m. here. I uh, made it just in time. Tried my best. Uh, just to be in time for you guys. So thank you so much for joining in. I did see some people in the chat already. So you know the drill. Let us know where you're from in the world and what time it is. And uh, we will get to know each other very well. Uh, today's topic is going to be really interesting, I think. And it's really a response to a lot of people who have asked these questions. And that is, how can you build an even smaller Lego city than you can? Now, as you know, Small Brick City was founded because I wanted to share ideas on how you could build a Lego City regardless of the space you had, whether you're big space or small space, but focusing more on the small space. Now what if you don't even have a small space and you only have a tiny space? Well that's what this episode is about and I'm going to explore what's the most realistic but smallest Lego City that you can build. So let's have a look at the chat, see who's around before we actually start uh, the topic. Uh, let's see who we have. We've got lots of people. Wow, thank you so much for joining in, guys. Let's start from the top. We have Fruitstock, and I'm sure I, I'm not pronouncing your name correctly. Oscar Lego, Ghost Rider, Lego Mania, Addison, how are you doing? Mario, Red Velvet, Stop Motion Studios, Samuel. Who else do we have? Max Clough, Magnus. Magnus, I thought you could make it, so I'm glad to see you here. JT Bricking, great to see you here as well. The Woodshop Teacher from Denmark. Blockhead UK, High Kaz. Mock Brick, Trudy Brick from Italy. Elan Bricks from Singapore. Sandra, hi, how are you doing? Germany, 6.04 p.m. for you. Joseph, the A gamer haven't seen you for a bit thank you so much for joining in lego films galagade always great to see you here who else do we have lego lamaniac thank you so much for joining us great thank you so much guys uh you know what i just got in so i hope you've got your coffee we're gonna talk about bricks but i tell you that's not coffee in here it's water actually but in the Every episode of Coffee and Bricks, if you're new to this live stream, I always have a very specific topic that I talk about. And then we also have a spotlight in between. And of course, we chat with our folks. Now, if you'd like to support the channel, there's several ways you can do so. And let me show you right here. What you can do is to head over to smallbrickcity.com. That's right. Head over to smallbrickcity.com and you can check out free Lego stuff like this uh, mini house. You also get a preview of the book and you get exclusive video tutorials as well. Lots of cool stuff that you can do. Now, you can also do other things and that is to do very simply just to like this video. If you're watching this live or the replay, hit that thumbs up. That always helps us. And super chats are enabled. So if you like to donate to the channel, you can just click on the dollar sign on the live chat if that's available in your city. What else can you do? Oh yes, of course, you can subscribe. That's right. Just hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you have been watching this and you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. Really happy to say that the channel has been growing. I've been hitting my consistent uh, three uploads a week now. As some of you might know, I've started uh, two new projects, so I'm really busy professionally at work. So I can't do daily videos, but I've still managed to keep at three. And of course, this live stream. All right, let's have a quick chat again uh, with a couple of people uh, before we start the actual live stream and let's just bring this onto the screen so we can see each other more friends have joined in thank you so much fuzzy brick studios teddy parsons bricks on thin ice thank you so much for joining us great mock brick YouTube is making a new policy and they want to change videos that are provided to children, Lego videos. Uh, the thing is that they deactivate the notifications and I believe they also want to reduce monetization. That's what I uh, heard. You feel I'm a bit dark? That's what Max Clark says. Okay, let's see what I'm going to do. I'm going to see if I can uh, very quickly adjust the lighting here. So just give me a second and tell me if it's better. Now, it's probably because I'm wearing a white shirt today and that probably just made the camera compensate. So I'm going to change that. Hopefully that's brighter a bit. And yes, I did hear about that. And I'm not sure if uh, 
Lego videos in particular are going to be affected? I know because you think Lego is for kids, so I'm not sure if they're just going to pick on Lego specifically because it's toys and they equate toys to kids. I think there's going to be some gray area. I'm sure there's going to be some things affecting and, um, and I'm sure they're going to find two things as they go about. Really, I understand where YouTube is coming from, but I think if they're going to really drop that gauntlet and just, you know, demonetize as well as end notifications and comments for any video that might appear to kids, that's, that's really going to be a lot. I mean, think about even, let's say, uh, movie channels and i'm talking about disney so are they going to stop disney from promoting toy story 5 when that comes out and no one can comment on that and no one's gonna get notified of that i'm not too sure so i would say do not worry about it uh, for now uh, we'll see what happens and i guess if i just make my content less kids friendly and i just make sure it's only for adults uh, maybe then uh I'll still get those notifications out to you. Jommy Bricks, Vigo, Tiny Brick City, Brickso Studios, thank you very much. Edison, yes, I saw you early on. Thank you so much. All right, tell you what, guys, I think uh, I've got something really interesting to talk about. So let's just launch into today's topic. And if you've got any questions or you'd like to chat, we'll do so later midstream. So if you just joined us, uh, let me tell you what we're going to do today. Today's topic is something I particularly like, and that is basically figuring out what's the possible smallest building or home or house we can do to create the smallest Lego city for minifigs. Now, that's my point. It's not so much on just creating a small Lego city. I still want it to be relatively minifig scale. I wouldn't say minifig scale, but it makes sense if you consider a Lego city. Because I'm sure you're familiar with micro cities where you could build really tiny ones and they're just symbolic. Uh, even like the architecture sets, right, that Lego puts out, technically those can comprise of a Lego city. But if you put a minifig within those displays, obviously it would be too small. It won't really make any sense. So that's why I really want to talk about today because I know a lot of people want to build Lego cities, but even with a small space, uh, they don't have that much space and they want to know what's the smallest Lego city they could possibly build that still makes sense uh, if they don't have enough space or maybe they don't have enough money or even time to invest in building a huge Lego city. So if you personally have a huge Lego city or you only want to build a huge Lego city, this live stream may not be for you. So this is to everyone else who wants to know how you can pack as much as you can in a small space. And even if you have a big Lego city, you might want to learn how to maximize the space or maybe even create a district in your larger Lego city to accommodate a much more dense population or dense built up area. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Uh, let me just show you some things over here. For example, a typical Lego city that you might be used to is something big like this. Of course, those who are familiar with Small Brick City will know that this is Brick Beach, the main level of my Lego city. And this would typically fall under the regular expectations of a Lego city. It is minifig scale, but it's also expert modular building in scale, meaning that uh, a lot of the expert modular buildings, 32 by 32 stud base plate buildings are in this particular build. But of course, I do have small builds as well. But let me show you something that might appeal to those who really have a small space, but still want some kind of a dense city. So here's another example of a Lego city. This fits an even smaller space that's only, I believe, one, two, three, three and a half base plates wide, and it's two base plates deep. So it's a pretty small space. We're talking about 20 inches by about 46 inches. So this would fit generally on almost any table. Now, some people I know, you might find this a bit too congested or you might find this cluttered. It really depends on your personal environment, where you live in, where you grew up, and what your own environmental influences are. So for me, I've always lived in a metropolitan city. So this to me looks exactly like a city. It's always very densely uh, made up. There are small streets, alleyways, small roads just for cars. There's pedestrian only walkways. 
And if you live in a city, you probably can relate to a city layout like that. If you're used to big sprawling spaces, you live in a farm or you live in an area where your nearest neighbor is a 10 minute drive, that's this to you probably feels unrealistic and claustrophobic. But if you live in a, I think an Asian city, European city, or even like a, in New York or even LA, uh, if you're in the US, you would definitely, you know, be familiar with such a layout. So a lot of the buildings I have over here are smaller builds, uh, something like this. So this is a project I worked on and I've got six mini houses or so built together in a space. Here's another example. In this case, I've got the uh, sandwich or coffee shop across from the houses and there's another smaller coffee kiosk there. And But this just gives you an idea of uh, the sort of buildings are built so they're smaller in size. The footprints we have here, I believe, are about 12 by 16. Or 12, no, 12 by, 12, it looks 12 by 12 probably. Uh, more along those lines. So they're smaller builds. And I've got another one here. If you look at this photo over here, on the right, you can see that building. So that's a house by itself on its own kind of a plot of land. And on the other side, you see six buildings all built together. And they only take up three quarter of a full base plate. Now, my point is when you look at something like this, what you see are smaller buildings compared to the expert model of buildings. But if you put a minifig next to it, you still can see, well, it still looks like it's minifig scale to a certain extent. Now, the house that you see here, that's a closer look of that house. This is a mini house and I actually offered this as free instructions from smallbrickcity.com. So here's a look at the back of the house. It's got a back door, there's some air conditioning, there's lots of exterior details. So if you want to know where to download this particular house or what do I mean by instructions, you can actually download instructions and also watch an exclusive video if you head over to smallbrickcity.com and uh, you just enter your name, put in your email, and you get access to download these instructions, and then you'll be able to build it. So what I've shown so far are basically smaller builds uh, that you can use to create a Lego city. Now, I've done videos on this before, so you can check out my playlist. Look for mini city layouts or building a Lego city if you don't have any space, uh, something along those lines. And basically, you'll find videos on this particular project. But that's not what I'm talking about today. Today, I'm going to talk about going even smaller. That's right. So those houses that you saw, as I said, they're about a 12 by 12 or 12 by 16 footprint. There's still reasonably enough space to put an interior. And of course, there's excess. As you got to see, there's an outside staircase. Now, could we go even smaller if you wanted to maximize space uh, that you might not have, or you just really want to squeeze as much as you can within your Lego city, well, I think it's possible and that's what I tried to do. And let me show you what I have over here. I've got a, another house that I've built and this is what I call a mini, mini house. This measures just eight by eight. Uh, so it's eight studs by eight studs, but the house itself is six studs by six studs. So it is pretty small. But notice when you see that mini fig next to it, it, it still looks reasonably okay. And I'm not saying it is mini fig scale. I'm just saying that in the context of a mini fig, one could possibly still accept that. Now, some of you might be looking at this and think that that's ridiculous. That's way too small. And I won't disagree with you. But if you lack the space, money or time to build a huge Lego city, this is a possible route that you can go. So this is the small house. And if you want to add in vehicles, because every Lego city should have a variety of builds, not just houses. You also want maybe small stalls, small buildings, office buildings or houses, but you also want vehicles. In that case, you want to use a vehicle which is four studs wide. And that's the one you see in front of you. And that came with one of those three-in-one creator sets. And you also can find them as part of Lego City sets. These are four stud wide vehicles. They're not the bigger vehicles you might find in bigger sets or even the Speed Champions. So the Speed Champions scale is really way too big and it will look very odd. And now let me show you a comparison photo with a half modular size building. Because the building you see in front of you right now, you probably can't really tell the scale just by looking at the screen because 
that's all you see. Now, let me show you how it looks like next to the pet shop. And that's one half of the pet shop modular building. So this is a 16 by 32 stud building. And there's also a speed champion Porsche in front of it. And now you can see how tiny that small house is. So it's, it's tiny in terms of area space. It's small in terms of height. But if I didn't put it with this building, you probably wouldn't have too much of a problem with that, I would believe. So now let's say you take that single building and you're to multiply it to create a kind of a two building linked house in a way, not really linked separated, but very close together like this. So now I've got two similar houses of the same size. They're still six studs by six studs. And right now this is on an eight by 16 plate. And I managed to put in a double two letter box in between them. So it feels like, you know, kind of a link house. Uh, not so much a townhouse because townhouses are really next to each other, but just take them as small two story houses. Now, of course, with something like this, you can't expect much in the interior. And you also can't expect a staircase or a ladder or any kind of access to the second floor. So there are some sacrifices to be made. But personally, I think these sacrifices are all right because I get to build a complete Lego city in a relatively small space. So once again, just to give you an idea of how this double building looks uh, to the half modular building, you can see even the half modular building still looks so much bigger than these two buildings. But let me show you exactly how I would go about building a Lego city from these small builds. So it starts off, of course, with the small builds. And I'm just going to show you a section of a road plate or a base plate. So this is a 16 by 32 base plate, which is generally half the size of a standard base plate or half the footprint of a full expert modular size building. So imagine I have my double built there, those two small houses on one end. Now imagine if I were to place another set of houses on the other side of the base plate. Now I don't have another set of houses, so I'm just gonna use this dark gray base plate as kind of a guide or reference point. Now what I can do as well is to add in a bit more detail uh, where the light gray base plate still is. And I can put in some green base plates and I'll also put along the edges dark gray one by something long tiles. That is kind of a curb. So what I've created is a little bit of a grass walkway in front of the houses and I have created a small narrow road in between and that's six studs wide. But now imagine I put in a bit more details such as uh, this fencing because we do not want kids running on the road and getting hit by cars. And we get a very nice look again. Now it looks almost like a residential area. And we're just to add a bit more detail to really liven it up. We can put in mini figs and we can put in those small cars. Now this is just half a standard base plate. And on it, I can place four houses and the car and of course minifigs are uh, in front of the houses and inside the houses i do have uh, some detailing inside uh, but i won't show it to you just yet but my point is imagine this is just half a base plate with four houses in one full base plate i can have eight houses and of course i can make them varied i can maybe combine two together to form a larger house i could create a, a double house but make it three stories high so that uh, the double side house is bigger but it can be logically taller as well and all this is just on a single standard 32 by 32 stud base plate so even if you had a tiny amount of room i'd expect you to have at least two three or maybe even four base plates uh, of space that you can afford for your Lego city and building it in this scale you really can see how much you can pack in into such a small space and that's really what I hope you can do if you do not have space and you thought you know you like a Lego city but you never thought you had the space oh well, now you can with this scale now once again I will admit it is not ideal because you are making sacrifices. You will not have fully detailed interiors. You will not have access like stairs. You would have to imagine that. But these houses that I built, they're all modular in nature, meaning that I can separate them at the levels and I can take off the roof as well. 
Now, I'm actually having two videos that I'll show you how I built these from start to finish. And I'll also show you the interiors and what sort of interiors I designed for these tiny houses to still make it relatively in scale when it comes to a minifig. So those videos will be released uh, this coming week. So make sure you come back, check the channel for those videos. But that's basically it. Now, the great thing is this is just a starting point. And you can take a lot of the LEGO official sets and incorporate it in a city of the scale. Because a lot of the smaller three-in-one sets, or even some of the city sets, they're really narrow, four studs or six studs, although they're open back but they're actually in the right scale. And if you look at the interior for those buildings, a lot of times they have no staircase, they have no ladders, there's no way to get from one level to the other. You have to use your imagination. That's fine in the context of this scale. And the furniture also is really a, a bit more miniaturized and they just fill enough detail in the interiors to make it interesting. And that's what you would do as well. So for example, this particular build. So this is known as the micro scale uh, brand Lego store. And this one, this came out, I believe, earlier this year. And this is actually the right scale when you think about in terms of that scale I just showed you. We're talking about eight studs in terms of a base plate, that width. So this would be a pretty large building in the context of that Lego city, but it would still work, especially as kind of an office building. So there are many more examples of this type of scale that you can incorporate into a Lego city if you use this scale. So what's the scale again? The width of my base plate is eight studs deep or wide, and it can of course go as long as you need, uh, but the scale of my building, especially for the house that you saw, it's only six studs by six studs, uh, and that's really tiny. But I always like to build any building, whether it's small or big, onto a base plate that is bigger than the house or the building itself because you do want some kind of area around so that you can create uh, some kind of texture. For example, even with this one that I built, let's uh, have a look at the single build. If you look at the single build uh, for this mini house, because I have a one stud all around the uh, perimeter around the house, I could even put in some of that, you know, little plantations or little vegetation on the side and it just looks nicely you know set on its own plot of land if you build it all the way to the very edge uh, generally it doesn't look so nice because it just feels incomplete so building it on with a tiny sidewalk even if it's just one stud wide like that to me does make a difference but let me know what you think uh what do you think of these mini houses do you like them do you think it's too ridiculous or do you actually appreciate a scale like that in order to build a lego city so let's check in with you guys i've got the chat on screen and uh, let me just pull out what you guys uh, are saying oh it looks like annie has joined us hello annie good for you to join us and uh let's see what people are saying let me go up all the way not so ugly guy thank you very much for joining in well, wow, lots of comments, so let's let's try uh, to see what you guys are saying. Could use minifigs in micropolis cities, they just become Godzilla monsters. That's what Lego Lamaniac says. A lot of people say they have a medium-sized Lego city. So let's see. Uh, Mario was wow, eight by eight buildings, tell me more. Well it's not eight by eight, six by six actually. Kawi Creations, how are you doing? Clorox Bleach from Malaysia, how are you doing? Lewis, how are you doing? Mama's Bricks. And, uh, wow, great to see so many people here. So I'm going to roll down. Mahan, thank you very much. Uh, great to see you. You say use one by one stud for a house. Is that a house for ants? Max Clark says, hey, JC, that's ridiculous and way too small. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, Edison says, not a fan of creative vehicles. To be honest, I'm not a fan either. But remember, this is all about if you don't have space and you still want a Lego city. But we're going to see how viable that is. Personally, I think it is workable. And if I didn't have space, this is probably what I'll go with. Lego fan MPZS, how are you doing? Uh, Ro Bricks. Tayshawn, how are you doing? Jelly. 
You better tell me how I pronounce your name. J E L L E. I'm sure it's not jelly. Maybe it's jelly or gel. Let me know. All right. So let's see what people are talking about uh, the buildings. Okay. So can we put a toilet in one of those houses? The woodshop teacher says, yes, you can. You can put in a toilet and a shower on one of the floors, but that's it. In fact, one of these houses are almost the size of my potter potty. Trick or Brick. Now, I should mention, I'd like to give a shout out to Trick or Brick. He actually downloaded my instructions to build that mini house. That's right, the mini house that I just showed you and talked about. Not the mini mini house, but the original mini house. And he did a great job building it. He did some of his own modifications. Uh, he's on the chat right now, but do check him out. Trick or Brick, head over to his channel and go ahead and subscribe to him as well. So what do you think, guys? Do you think that that particular size is too small? Or would you agree that uh, if you don't have space, then the 6x6 six six uh, uh, footprint will work? Black Woman Gamer, thanks for joining us. Am I still doing those brick design series? I like that I was showing what one type of brick can do. You're really talking about that brick design breakdown? No, I don't have the time. That was a weekday stream, but uh, since I've taken on this new work projects, I just don't have time to do weekday streams. I'm not even in the country to do it, that's why. So maybe once in a while. JT Bricking says, I made an eight by 11 with shower, toilet, sink, oven, stove, dining table, bed, TV, and sofa. That's amazing if it's all one floor. I'm just wondering if your toilet bowl is also your dining chair and sofa combined. So let us know. Lego Mania, he says he likes the size. Edison says, if you have no space, then it's okay. If you have the space, I wouldn't recommend something so small. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean... Of course, I agree with you. If you have the space, then you would go with a more uh, minifig scale uh, as I do. Even though I don't have a huge Lego city, I do have sufficient space to do minifig scale buildings. But in response to people who really don't have the space, or maybe you just want to maximize the space even more, you could maybe build a, a version which doesn't look so nice. Now, I used a lot of white bricks, so it looks nice and shiny. But what if you had to use really dark, you know, uh, dark tan, olive green, uh, light tan, black sort of colors and make it look really like a shanty town. Maybe that could be your l low rent income area. Hope that's not too politically incorrect, but I, I think you know what I'm saying. Trick or brick. Hi, glad uh, you like that. Uh, you do have a large table for your city, but you still like the smaller houses and will build a lot of them. I think, yeah, it's all about maximizing space because sure you have a you know, no matter how big a space you have, even if you have a huge space, you'd start filling it up with builds and soon you're going to run out of space and you have to figure out, are you going to take out some builds, add in more, you're going to add in more space. So there's never too much as too, or there's no such thing as too much space for a Lego city. I've, I've yet to hear that yet. The toilet is the base of the shower though. That's what JT Bricking says. Edison says, how do I feel about trains in a layout? Do I find them useful? I have a medium city and I'm considering adding a few train lines. The thing about trains, they take a lot of space. In order to save on space, then I'd say have an elevated train line uh, that you can weave in between your buildings. That will save you a lot of space on the ground. But if you don't have much space and you want to lay a track on your Lego city, it takes up more space than you think, especially when you add in curves and such, you really need a lot of area space. So personally, if you want to keep to scale, you need at least six studs for the train. Uh, that's basically a lot of space. Uh, so you have to think about that in terms of the track space. Ruin Hutchkins, thank you for joining us. Yes, you made it to another live stream. Bricks on Thin Ice says, there are some small apartments in the metropolitan area centers and they're madly expensive, like here in Helsinki. Uh, well, in any kind of densely populated metropolitan city, they're all going to be expensive and chances are they're all going to be uh, really uh, tight and small. 
black woman gamer you say you have a huge space and it's filling up fast i've seen your space before you do have quite a large space but yes you do also have a lot of uh, things going on and i'm sure as you build you're always replacing builds when new sets come out you think about either adding it to something or breaking something down for parts to make a remark it's always evolving and i think any good lego city builder always evolves you know they're never happy with their uh, city they, they may think they've completed it and then two weeks later they're tearing things down adding new things in and it doesn't help that lego's always introducing new nice sets that we want to add in as well bricks on thin ice says his space is filled up but it's already way too small yes you do have a uh small space but yes you definitely can maximize that space Tiny Brick City, aptly named, he has only two 32 by 32 base plates and a 1 by 48 by 48 base plate. Well, that's exactly what I'm saying. If you only have that space, you'd really want to build with a smaller footprint. Don't add in huge expert modular size buildings. Go for smaller builds like the one I showed in this live stream and look for my playlist for that uh, Lego City building a lego city if you have no space those are great examples of how you can fill that space in fact i i can bet you i could take just two 32 by 32 base plates and your 48 by 48 base plate and still create what would look like a bustling city and you know what a lot depends on who's going to see your city if a lot of the world is going to see your city through social media like instagram or maybe even youtube it's all about the framing of the camera that's secret look at these photos over here so this is from the mini city okay this is not a good representation because you do see the outside but if you take close-ups for example this one here because you have no real frame of reference it looks like any lego city it looks huge okay i won't say huge but it looks big so let me give you another example maybe from this side that still looks decently big and if I just take sections, close-ups, you really have no idea what the scale is for the Lego City and it comes across looking big. So you still can cheat and create the illusion that you have a larger Lego City than you actually have. And the great thing about really having a small Lego City that are just on a few base plates, you can easily turn them around to take photos from different angles. So don't feel bad at all. JT Breaking says, imagine if Jang City is in this scale. Yeah, that, that would be uh, a really large, small, tiny city. Brick of Galum, great to see you here. LVA Bricks as well. Thank you. Gage Jepsen. Uh, Lego Lamanac, how about a mirror wall to give the illusion of size? I think you mentioned this before when we were talking about it as well. And I said, it is true that you will get the illusion of size with a mirror as a backdrop for your Lego city. The only problem is if you're going to take photographs, you always have to take that at the angle. If not, you're going to see yourself in the shot. But definitely a possibility. Trudy Brick, JC, could you please tell me where I can find your video where you cut the plates? All right, so that video was when I was building my fire station, I talked about cutting plates, but I used a table saw to do that. But when I used a pen knife to cut that, I shared it in one of my videos when I was building my fire station mock from start to finish. It would have been the first or the second video. So look for it there. Unless I'm wrong. But I'll, I'll, I'll try to find out and I'll let you know as well. Lewis says, how could you maximize space while you're working mostly with two by something bricks? And then I would say, don't work with two by something bricks. Try to work with one by something bricks because of course, the smaller the bricks you use, the less space you take up. So you could use technically two by something bricks, but then you won't have interior. So keep to the same area of a six by six, but just don't have interior. That's what I would say. So you create just the facade, but a you know, a three-dimensional, four-sided facade. So it's not really a facade, it's actually a complete building, but there's a shell, so there's nothing inside if you have a lot of two by four bricks. That will be what I suggest. What if you put some facades or big buildings to make your uh, Lego city look bigger? bigger? Yes, sometimes you can build really large buildings and uh, there's a channel, Robin Hood Bricks, 
uh, check him out he's really cool as well pretty new on youtube but he's got a great channel shares a lot on the building of his lego city and he has actually added a facade of larger buildings and tall buildings but really thin i think only maybe four studs maybe maybe not even four studs but very thin buildings just the facades and they're against his wall so that when you look at, at it from the front they take up very little space in terms of depth but because of their height and their width it looks big and it of course creates the illusion that illegal city is bigger than the other blockhead blockhead uk does uh give great suggestion on her elevated tram yep you should check it out she maximizes the space very well as well she does have significant space for lego city but it's not huge by any stretch of the imagination but she maximizes the space which makes her lego city look really impressive all right mamas bricks and blockhead uk are going to meet up because i believe they're both going to be exhibiting is it in denmark am i right correct me if i'm wrong Brick of Gollum says, I find this smallest block of Small Brick City very efficient. Thank you very much. Trick of Brick says, I like the large modular buildings intertwined with the smaller buildings, more natural looking. Yes, I do agree. Having a combination, of course, you need the luxury of some space. Having a combination of expert modular buildings, smaller buildings and tiny buildings always give the, the best combination in my opinion because it looks elevated. Rowan says, I'm sad that I can't make a large city because my Legos and my house burned down last year. But I'm happy I've at least a small city which your videos have helped so much. Well, I'm so sorry to hear that, uh, that your house and your Lego uh, burnt down. Uh, really unfortunate. But I hope you're, you know, starting to rebuild literally and figuratively. Uh, so all the best to you. And uh, Max is talking about the same thing. Yep, the use of thin buildings, facades for low relief buildings at the back yep so i talked about that earlier but you know i should do some videos on that on just building facade buildings how to build the most efficient facade buildings but make them look more realistic and how to secure them as well because when they're very thin and they're tall they're likely to fall so maybe i should actually uh, look at that and that's something i think i'll build gage jepson says what is the video called where you remark the hillside house it would be it's a three-part series you can look in my playlist uh, under how to guides but basically uh, the three parts the first part was how to do landscaping i think for the for a building and one was how to do the interior of a building so just look under my playlist for how to guides under lego city guides and mocks and you definitely find it there so it's three part series for that for the hillside house Yes, if we are talking about tiny, tiny, tiny uh, buildings, I mean the Micropolis scale, uh, which cares from Blockhead UK, really does so well. Check out her channel. She's on the chat right now. So just head over to the channel and subscribe. So those are definitely not uh, micro or yeah, minifig scale. And they're not meant to be that. Those are like a nano, not even a nano, even smaller than nano scale, micro nano scale. Uh, but that's a good idea if you really have no space, as in you only have maybe 32 by 32 or 48 by 48 stud base plate size of space, then you might consider doing a Micropolis uh, sort of uh, build. But if you do want to include minifigs, because I know we all love minifigs, right? And they release the collector mini collectible minifigs. So we still want a place for them to live. So that's why I still want to build. Even if I don't have space, I'd still recommend if you can building a mini mini house as I've shown in this live stream so that you can let your collectible minifigs live. So they won't be so lonely as well. John Bricks, thanks for joining us. No worries. You are not late. Bricks Ninja, thank you for joining in as well. And a woodshop teacher says, Samuel Turner, Rogue Bricks, check out Robin Hood Bricks. He makes, he has made some fine facades. Yes, yes, do check him out. Very cool channel. Uh, but I will do facades in an upcoming video. Maybe I'll do it for next year, uh, next, not next year's, but next week's live stream if I have time. Depends if I have time to build. So uh, I'll think about it. If not, somewhere along the near future, I will do something got to do with uh, facades and how we can maximize, I think, not just the bricks, but also the space. Gala says, right now she can 
chat because she just finished cooking dinner. Hi Brenda, how are you doing? All the way from Canada. You know, that's what I love about these live streams. We always get so much great participation here uh, from people all over the world. So, great. Okay, I think, guys, Samuel, Blockhead UK, we're promoting Robin Hood Bricks too much. So, we'll put a stop to that. He's not paying me anything. So, let's not promote him anymore. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, at this point, I always like to do a spotlight. That's right, this is the Small Brick City Spotlight where I often share something interesting that I'm working on or something interesting that I find out. Well, this time I'm going to show you something that I found. And this is something I found on Reddit X as well. But the good thing is I think it's related to uh, what we're talking about this uh, today, about building you know, Lego City if you do not have a small space. So this particular guy let me just make sure i get his name because i did write his name down and i do want to credit him so i'm checking my phone because that's where i uh, stored the information so this guy on reddit and sorry for this downtime as i look for the name he basically found a great way to maximize space for a lego city and you know what i might actually look at this in time to come so he's the ferg 2000 so the ferg is an f e RG2000. So that's the user on Reddit and he built a wall city. So I'm not kidding. So here's how it looks like. He built this city on a wall. So it, I guess he hung it in some way. He must have put some kind of picture hook uh, holder or maybe they're just nails and he somehow just hung it. But it looks like a part of a mountain i guess he's carved in the city and you know what there really are little cities built into mountains especially in china uh, this obviously doesn't look chinese looks a bit more european or maybe even sci-fi but i thought the idea intrigued me in the sense that if you do not have space at all you probably have some space on the wall and you could explore building something like that and imagine if you fill a whole wall let's say the wall is at least eight feet wide and you definitely have at least 10 feet of height. Assuming you have tables or shelves, so you, you lose the bottom four feet, you still have a good six feet. Uh, and I think building like that could be a really impressive uh, display in your home, in your office. Uh, this particular build that you see is in his office. Uh, so it's not even in his home. So he's got different sculptures that he has built, which are all wall mounted. So if you wanted to build this, I think this would be really cool. And if you didn't have space, uh, you don't. to me, you don't have to adopt something like a mountain or a city built into a mountain. You could try to find some way to build, you know, small houses onto the wall in a creative way. And uh, just imagine it's an imaginary wall city and you have different houses, different cities, and, you know, people just can walk on different levels. I think, you know, when you don't have space, you have to be creative. And this is one example of being creative. So that's my spotlight of the week. And I hope you enjoyed that. So did you like that? Let me know in the comments and tell me if you're now inspired to build something like that. Let's see what you guys say. <laughs> I see Bricks on Thin Nice wants to talk about Robin Hood again. Yeah, Lego La Maniac, you like that, right? Maybe you could build a puzzle box in your wall. Now, the only thing about these wall cities I can imagine is there's going to be lots of uh, dust. So Bricks Ninja says, is that ball on top made of Lego? I believe everything is made of Lego. That is probably made using connector parts with flexible tubing or maybe technic parts. Uh, someone can advise me. Well, without seeing a closer look, I'm not too sure, but that's my guess. John Briggs here from Japan. Very good. Kumbanwa. Your English is fine. Yeah, if that built falls, he's dead, especially if he's sitting below it. Not good if you have kids or cats. Uh, kids, yeah, I guess if they climb up, they try to pull it down. It's true. Brenda asks, JC, if you're a small city, you keep buying more sets and mocking more sets. Where are you putting them all? Right now, there are still 
in Metro City, <laughs> but now they are taking up the roads. So, you know, I've said for the longest time I have to do a city update, and that that is, I am taking some of the old modular buildings down. Uh, some uh, because I think they don't fit in so much. Some it's because I actually built them by rebricking them, so they weren't from the original sets, uh, like the retired sets. So I got the instructions, built, got the parts, and built them as good as I could but uh, I think I'm going to remove some of those like the Grand Emporium unless in future if I really do want to buy the original build as in the original set to rebuild it uh, if not I'm just going to take the parts uh, for mocks and I'm going to kind of uh, just do it all over again uh, but my sets are basically all over my table Robin, <laughs> you thought you missed this stream. No such luck. Yeah, it seems I'm going longer than I usually am. Uh, I was just waiting for you to join, Robin. Andrew, great to see you here. Thank you so much, Andrew Swanger. Let us know where you're from in the world and what time it is. Trudy says, why plan a video on how to keep the city clean? So here's my trick about keeping a Lego city clean. They're always dusty and dirty, so I don't have to worry about them being clean. So if it's always dirty, you don't have to be clean. Brick architecture. Yes, Daryl is uh, building, Daryl from Beverly's Bricks, he's building his Lego barn. Yeah, I'm sure that'll be interesting uh, when he actually builds it and puts his Lego city. Then, and if he runs out of space, I guess he can just build another barn. Yes, Gallagate says, yeah, you can switch out buildings in, and remove them into something else so you can't run out of space. It's true. And, you know, I think as Lego fans, uh, I, maybe just as human beings, after something is up, we get so used to it and we get bored of something, so we just want to switch them out. So that's probably what I do. Andrew from Pennsylvania, USA, 12.50 p.m. here. Great. I'm 12 hours ahead of you, so 12.50 a.m. for me. Rowan says, just make a Lego strip street sweeper to make it clean <laughs> well actually i do have a way to keep my lego city clean i will share it in a future video maybe i'll just do it as part of a live stream because i'm not sure if it's interesting enough in a video but i'll think about it would a fan that was always on help or hurt the lego city hmm it depends how big your lego city is but i think then the dust just gets all over the place right but that could work a fan blowing above your lego city could possibly work Chris says, what time do I sleep? I don't sleep. Red Velvet, what's going on with your skyscraper? Do I finish the interior? No, I have not. I'm not sure when I'm ever going to finish the skyscraper, honestly. Maybe I will rebuild it before I even complete the interior. It's just going to take so much parts that... Uh, I don't know, I, I just... Yeah, not sure. Bricks Ninja, a windy city. Yeah, maybe it could, it could be Chicago. Uh, John Brick says, can I please add lights to my city without the lights visible? Yeah, you know what? I'm not so keen on putting lights in my city for one main reason. I'm always m changing my city so much that I do not want to bother wires. And, you know, that's another skill set altogether and another thing that you have to worry about. But if you really want to learn about, you know, lighting up a Lego city and making it great, check out fellow BrickTubers uh, members channel Brixonville. He's got a great channel, so that's Brixonville. Uh, in fact, I put his minifig on my latest Shrimp Shack Remock review. He's adding lights uh, to my Shrimp Shack. Uh, but he's got a great channel. He's got, you know, he just moved and he's rebuilt his Lego City and he's relit it and it looks beautiful. So do check his channel out. Bricks by Frank, you are a bit late. I'm sorry, but you will have to watch uh, the replay because we're about to wrap up. Uh, but I, I think I'll share one last thing uh, and that's got to do with the friend set because I haven't talked about it yet. I actually did buy the friend set and I shared this photo on Instagram as well as on the community section of my YouTube channel. And I gave the comment that this is the first time I've got a Lego set which matches my doormat. That's right. I actually happen to have an original Friends merchandise in the form of a Central Perk doormat. It sells welcome. You don't see the full welcome sign here. But I thought that was pretty funny. And we did uh, buy the Friends set 
we do not intend to remock it. I think it's a pretty cool set, especially if you do like the series. I think the best thing about this set is not so much the build itself, but it's the minifigs. And I think everyone universally have said these minifig expressions, the hair pieces are spot on to the characters from the Friends TV show. So uh, we're going to keep this intact. I do not think I'm going to remock it. Now, a fellow BrickTuber, part of the BrickTubers network, Dr. McBrick, he has bought two sets and he intends to remock it uh, along with another set so to create a brand new mock. So it'll be interesting to see what he does. Someone did ask me if it's possible to remock the Central Perk set into uh, like a Fuller Modeler building. I think it has to be built almost like a New York apartment and I believe Central Perk itself is a corner build so you'd have to build a corner apartment building so at least two or three stories high definitely need a lot of bricks for that and you'd have to find some way to enclose this Central Perk as you see it and you might even have to change the shape the thing is this is actually quite a large footprint for what it is definitely more than 32 across because it's odd shaped and therefore it's odd size so you definitely have to re-brick it in a certain way. Now for me personally, for Annie and myself, this is just going on our separate display shelf. So we still have other display shelves where we can put sets that aren't in our Lego city, like the Stranger Things sets and stuff like that. So that's uh, what we're gonna do with this particular set. But I think the detailing for the set is great. That coffee machine, that's my favorite thing I think from the set. And also all the different central perk signages, the stickers for the menu, all that works for me in my opinion. And that's also not just coming from liking the TV series or being familiar with the TV series. Uh, if you just take it as a little cafe by itself, it is really cool. And if you intend to just take the parts to remark a smaller cafe, I think that's uh, probably a good idea as well. Although it is pretty pricey because of the licensing that you have to pay. But if you just want it for a collector's item, I think it's pretty cool. So let's uh, see what you guys are saying before we wrap this up. Glad you guys like uh, the doormat. Let, let me bring it up some of the questions. Chris says, which camera do I use? Uh, so for the live stream, I use a different camera. I'm using the Logitech CX90, C90, something like that. But it's, uh, it's a webcam basically. Uh, and I'm using my own mic over here, a separate mic. But for the camera that I use for filming all my Lego videos, so that's a Canon. And I can't remember the model number, but it's a semi-pro camera, which I've got mounted on a double swivel head, and that goes on a ball jointed tripod. So I think I'll share, some people have asked me about the camera gear and the sound gear that I use for my mic and stuff. Uh, so maybe I'll share that in a future video if you guys are interested. If you're interested to know what gear I use for my live stream and my normal videos, uh, let me know and, and I'll do a video on that. Jimmy Bricks, thanks for joining in. Purple Builder. Yes, a lot of people do use the thin paintbrush or any kind of brush to brush off the dust from Lego. The problem, it just goes somewhere else. I do actually have a little uh, machine or dust buster type deal or mini vacuum cleaner that I use. And I'll I guess I'll show it to you in just a bit. Trick of Brick says, friend set was sold out at your Lego store today. Glad you like the doormats. Uh, yep, full of cats, dog and hairs, absolutely. Perfect Painter says, think you could make a studio with the friend set? You could. I mean, it already is a studio because it is built like a uh, TV set studio. Robin says, you had a billion yesterday and Lego staff were buying it like hotcakes. So I guess everyone, yeah, even in this part of the world, Singapore and Malaysia, I believe the friend sets are uh, very popular. Darius Dojo, great to see you here as well. Max Clark suggests that we could add the central perk below the corner garage. That's actually interesting. Not Well, the, the sizing would be, I think, a bit of a pain in the neck to try to get exact. And I think the interior of the corner garage is just too small for this central perk. But if you just want the facade, I think you got something there. Rowan says, great channel is Jackhammer. Yes, Jackhammer is a man who has no life. He just builds Lego Stranger Things mocks. But great, great channel, great builder as well. Chris says, what's my favorite Lego set? 
I'll answer that another time. I think I've answered it before, but I'll answer it the next time. Oh, is that right, Gallagate? Gallagate says, Dr. McBrick is going to mock it with the Sanctum Sanctorum set. So he bought two Sanctum Sanctorums and he's going to try to mock it with Central Park. You know what? That makes sense, actually. Uh, did you hear him say that or are you just guessing? But that would make perfect sense because they're both kind of New York based. And the color scheme would work. A pretty smart guy. That I'll be interesting to see how interested to see how that looks like. But I think that will come off uh, pretty well, especially if he takes out the Sanctum Sanctorum part and just use Pete's apartment. Uh, take two sets, build them together, and build it on top of Central Perk or reconfigure Central Perk. I think that will be pretty Central Perky. Very good. Lego Lamanic says you're saying you don't have as tiny space you have let on. The Patria. No, I said I don't have a tiny space for my Lego City. I didn't say I had a tiny space overall. I've always maintained that I only want to invest a certain amount of space in my place for a Lego City. I never at any time suggested I had a tiny place. Yes. Uh, am I using Mac or Windows? I'm using Windows. No Macs. No Apple for me. Let's see. So Samuel says he loves to know what cameras and such interested. All right, I'll do that. Well, great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bring something nice. I think JC gets hot with doctor's ideas. <laughs> All right, guys. You guys are tremendous. We've gone, well, practically almost an hour. But it's always a pleasure. Doesn't it always seem like it goes pretty fast? I think it always, at least to me, it seems to go fast. I know to Robin Howell, this probably feels like a three-hour live stream. But to the rest of you, let me know if you think it goes by very fast. And remember to please give it a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And you know what? Feel free to leave comments in the uh, comment section as well. As always, thank you so much. Check out more videos before you leave. Talk to you soon.